We've all been there. You're standing in a museum, staring at a painting, and all you can think is, I don't get it. To me, knowing the story behind an artwork is a huge part of knowing how to look at it. I'm Amanda, the host of the Art of History podcast, where we view history through the lens of some really great works of art. Each episode, we dive deep into the bigger picture behind some familiar and maybe not so familiar pieces. Check out Art of History now wherever you get your podcasts. Culture Kids, welcome to our show. We are a family podcast dedicated to empowering a generation of kind and empathetic creators and citizens of this world. So during our break, we decided to revisit and polish an old favorite episode of mine about the Dead Sea. Please enjoy, and we look forward to returning on January 6th. Happy holidays. Today, we're going to explore a mysterious and magical lake, one that is known to be one of the saltiest bodies of water in the world. It is at the lowest point on Earth and has healing properties too for people everywhere. Stop it! Asher, can you tell us what this is? The Dead Sea! The Dead Sea is a lake bordering the country Jordan to the east and another country, Israel, to the west. Mommy and Daddy had the opportunity to visit this mysterious and gorgeous lake and have to say it is one of the most memorable places we've ever been. Because it has healing properties, it's so different from all the other lakes you've been to. You're right. One of the main things that makes the Dead Sea so special is that it is very, very salty. Wow. The Dead Sea is located in the desert where there isn't much rain. In the summer, the weather is really hot and the winters are not really cold. This actually leads us to introduce the word of the week, which is... Evaporation. Asher, can you share with our listeners what evaporation is? Evaporation is when water turns from liquid into a gas. Yes. So, when the water vapor rises out of the lake and into the air, That's when you sometimes see mist and what looks like steam coming out of the water because there is so much evaporation happening. The hot summer temperatures cause the lake water to evaporate fast. Wow. When the water evaporates, it leaves behind salt. Science is fun! Yes, so as I mentioned, in the Dead Sea, there's not much rain, so the water evaporates more than it gets replaced. This causes a lot of salt to build up over the years. If you look closely, you'll see piles of salt crystals in the water. So you also have to be careful not to accidentally step on them as they tend to be very sharp and edgy. Uh Uh-oh, have you stepped on them? We did. Daddy and I went to go swim in the Dead Sea, and I did not look closely and accidentally stepped on a giant salt mound. Oh, no. It was white, edgy, and very sharp. Luckily, no scratches, but it did not feel very good. We still had a wonderful time exploring the rest of the sea. But aren't all oceans salty too? That is a very good question, Asher. The Dead Sea is more than 30% saltier than the regular ocean because it traps a lot of salt without a good way for it to flow out. This happens because it's in a low, low, hot area. Very little rainfall as we discussed earlier. Imagine it like a giant salt bowl that keeps getting saltier over time. Well, how about that? 
Ooh, salty. <laughs> Let's talk about what it's like to swim in the Dead Sea. So one of the most fascinating things about the Dead Sea is that you can float in the water without even trying. You don't even need to swim. Yeah. That sounds so cool. So you don't even need to know how to swim? Yeah! You don't. When you enter the Dead Sea, your whole body suddenly feels airy and light, yeah. and without making any effort, you're floating, like you're floating amongst clouds. And that's because the water's so salty, it makes it much denser and heavier than regular fresh water. If you swim in it, you float very easy. That's exactly it. Because the water in the Dead Sea is super salty, it's much denser than a person's body. And when we say the water in the Dead Sea is dense, it means there's a lot of stuff like salt and minerals packed into the water, making it heavier than regular water. Oh, so don't dunk your head in the water. Yes, that's so important to mention. If you go into the Dead Sea, make sure you wear goggles because if you get those salty water in your eyes, it could be very painful. Ouch. Also, swallowing this water can be very dangerous for your body because it has so much salt. You got it! But if you could float and feel alive, why is it called the Dead Sea? <laughs> Ah, it's called the Dead Sea simply because it's so salty that no living things can survive in the water. So there's no fish, sharks, or turtles in the sea? Nope, but there are teeny tiny microbes that were discovered at the bottom of the Dead Sea and along the shores. Microbes are tiny living things that are found all around us and are too small to be seen. Some are bacteria or viruses. Yes, microbes in the Dead Sea are like the ultimate survivors, adapting to a seriously tough environment. With the unique conditions there, these tiny creatures have evolved super efficient ways, such as advanced salt pumps to keep their insides just right. Some of these microbes even produce natural sunscreen-like substances to shield themselves from the crazy strong sun at the Dead Sea. So, would you like to know my favorite thing about the Dead Sea? It's not the floating part. Nope. It's that the Dead Sea is a free spa. <gasps> oh, yeah. Since the biblical times, which is a very long, long, long time ago, the Dead Sea was a place where people went to heal their bodies and make their skin look younger. The mud that forms in the Dead Sea is what people used to make their skin feel smoother and younger. Mommy puts lots of things on her skin, so you need this. <laughs> Thanks, Asher. When we visited the Dead Sea, we slathered our whole body in the Dead Sea mud. Nice. The Dead Sea mud is unique because it's packed with a rich blend of minerals like magnesium, calcium, and potassium. These small minerals can enter your skin pores, promoting better blood circulation. This not only gives your skin a healthy glow, but also makes it soft and silky. The Dead Sea Mud can even help with pain and some diseases. Some experts claim that the Dead Sea can help with some serious sicknesses and many travel to stay at resorts near the Dead Sea to see if they can be healed. Such illnesses include arthritis, skin diseases like psoriasis, and respiratory illnesses. Also because the Dead Sea is at the lowest point of Earth, there's a lot more oxygen there. So it makes people with breathing problems breathe easier near the Dead Sea. And I will say, after spending a whole day at the Dead Sea and spending some time slathering ourselves in the Dead Sea mud, my skin did look a lot smoother and I did have a nice glow. And not to mention, the area near the Dead Sea is simply gorgeous and breathtaking. 
just looking out at the beautiful lake and the mountains will probably make anybody feel happier, healthier, and more relaxed. Well, my skin is always glowing and drawing because I'm always running and sweaty. Well, that's a really good point. Playing and moving around and exercising is the best way to have glowing skin and stay healthy. Well, I want to visit the Dead Sea someday. Well, maybe one day. But for now, you don't have to go very far for an exciting adventure. You can transform your home into a Dead Sea spa. Just fill up the bathtub with warm water. Add some bath salts and get creative with floaties or a life vest to imagine the floating experience of the Dead Sea. You can also make your own Dead Sea mud face mask using ingredients like oatmeal, yogurt, or honey. And grown-ups, check out our show notes for kid-friendly face mask recipes. And remember that great big adventures can start right at the comfort of your own home. with some jokes as we always do. Okay, I'll go first. Okay. Where do mummies like to swim? In the Dead Sea. Okay, that one might have been a little too easy. Allow me to do one more. Okay, can I go after? Sure. Why is the Dead Sea so salty? Because the sand never waves back. I don't get it. Okay, so some people say that they are salty about something when they're angry or when they're bitter. Okay, so in this case, the sand is angry. And so we say that the sand is salty. Get it? Yeah. Okay, your turn. What? the wave say to the beach? What? Nothing, it's just waves. Ah, that's a good one. Because ocean has waves and we wave when we say hello. Got it. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to a previous episode from December 2022. We'll be reviving and polishing a few more episodes until we return in January 2024. Don't forget to check out our Instagram page at Culture Kids Media for more fun updates and stay in touch. 